Yo, what's up wrestling fans once again? This is Brooklyn's own Toddy D. And today I'm here to discuss everything that went down last night, January 9th, 2012 show of WWE's Monday Night Raw. Let's just get right into it. I, for one, personally love the progression of the whole Kane character, with the mask back on, with the badass attitude, with the hell, fire and brimstone, the way he used to be back in the 90s before kids used to cheer for him. This is the Kane that I like to see. I like the new look, I like the mask coming back, you know, it kind of makes me laugh that I see some of these people on the internet and, you know, just talking amongst themselves, these idiot marks thinking that it's a different cane. I mean, how stupid can you be? They're like, oh, well, how does he grow back so quickly if he was bald just a few months ago? Well, geniuses, if you remember from the past when Kane originally took his mask off when he lost to Triple H in the garden, which you're sure was there, the hair is part of the mask. It's not real hair, it's hooked and connected to the masks. Ugh, fucking marks. Anyway, bottom line is this. Kane is better with the mask on. He's more believable as a big guy. He's more believable as a monster. And the, whole, the whole issue with him and Cena, I'm loving it. Not just because he makes Cena tap into the dark side, so to speak. But the whole thing is, I love how he's been choking Cena out. Making it look like he's really choking the living shit out of him. And now with Zack Ryder in the midst with the Long Island IZ hanging out and chilling with Cena. I don't know if that's too good for you, bro, because the bottom line is, if you keep chilling with Cena, you're going to be part of Kane's destruction. More on that later. So, getting back to the whole Cena-Kane fiasco, who knows where this is headed, especially the fact that Cena should be building on his match at WrestleMania with The Rock. And then again, as I mentioned in one of my other posts, Cena might even be feuding in the future with Daniel Bryan for the title. So there's so many, like, ifs and ands going on with that scenario, so, we can discuss that all the time, but I'm here today just to discuss a little bit of each regarding last night's Monday Night Raw. CM Punk once again, hot as ever, the crowd's loving him. I like the whole thing he's got going on, you know, with the whole feud with Dolph Ziggler coming up at the Royal Rumble. Last night, you know, Jack Swagger put on a pretty good match, pretty solid. Obviously, I knew there was going to be some kind of bullshit outcome. And the whole John Laurinaitis character, people say how boring he is, how flat he is. How he drones on and on and on. Did you ever stop to think that maybe the guy is getting paid to act this way? You know, before he was the guy in charge of talent relations and the interim uh, raw sauce, uh, whatever, whatever the hell he says, before he was all that crap, he was Johnny Ace. He was a wrestler before he was the temporary GM, the this, the that, the talent relations, blah, 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 blah. All I know is this, John Laurinaitis, whether he means to be a jerk off or not, the character he's portraying on TV is perfect. And now with the whole interaction he's got going on with CM Punk, it's very reminiscent of the days of Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon. You know eventually, Johnny Ace is going to come out of Big Johnny's character, he's going to get back in that ring, and CM Punk's going to hopefully throw him a beat. Anyway, other things that went on last night on Monday Night Raw made yours truly sick to his stomach. I, as you can see, I'm wearing my DX t-shirt. I miss the old days of the Attitude Era. I miss when things were had lived. I miss the violence. I miss all the controversies that were going on back in the days of the Monday Night Wars. Now, since there's no competition, they're just doing all kinds of, WWE's just doing all kinds of stupid stuff. But oh well, that's their call, not mine. The bottom line is this. For months and months and months, they've been building this Brodus Clay character. Every time you see John Laurinaitis on his phone, telling Brodus Clay, don't worry about it, big guy. You're going to be out. Uh, I'll have you come in next week, just one more week, and he click off his stupid phone, do his little Twitter shit. Meanwhile, John John Lauren Ice is saying how, yeah, the longer I make this guy wait, I feel bad for the first opponent he faces. He's gonna crush him. He's gonna kill him. Blah blah blah. And you know, I'm not gonna say that I figured out what kind of character was gonna be on last night on the TV there, but I didn't think he was gonna come back as evil and as mean as the way John Lauren Ice was portraying him. Because let's face it. If they keep talking about this and building up like that, obviously it's going to be something either totally different, which it was, or something basically not the same as the way John Lauren Ice was saying. So all of a sudden I hear this weird music, and it kind of sounded familiar. So, you know, I was kind of curious. I did some research. It turns out the music that Brodus Clay used last night, Ernest the Cat Miller, when he had his brief stint in WWE, he used the same music. So now when I see Brodus Clay coming out with these two dances, I'm thinking to myself, Holy shit, what's Flash Funk doing out here? And how much weight did he gain? You know, for a minute I rubbed my eyes because, you know, I wasn't drinking last night and I seen this big fat guy come out with a pompadour hat and, and a couple of dances. It looked like a deadly combination 
of Flesh Funk and The Godfather. I mean, it looked like The Godfather and Flesh Funk actually banged heads with each other, and that was the mess that you got left over. But anyway, personally, I hope this gimmick is a one-trick pony, and we never see it again. Because let's face it, it was awful, it was stupid, and it was ridiculous. And I really hope that this does not work out. I hope, I hope he's, I hope Brodus plays new character as Brodosaurus, leaves the WWE faster than the goon did. And for those of you out there that are little Jimmy's who don't know who the goon is, Google him, look him up. It was a fly-by-night, one-trick pony. He was in and out, thank God. Another time, another place, we'll talk about the goon. But anyway, then you got this whole new, slowly evolving character with Daniel Bryan. You know, the guy comes out. He looks like he's a fucking Amish guy with his long-ass beard. I mean, he's disgusting. I mean, this is a guy that was Brian Danielson back in the day, so he was one of the indie's hottest prospects, and now they're making him a goofball. But then again, if you're Daniel Bryan, you change your name, you're making all that kind of money, and you're getting some kind of reaction, well, I guess why not, right? But the thing is this. This whole Dave and Goliath thing's been done numerous times between Big Show and Rey Mysterio, and now you got Big Show and Daniel Bryan. It's just old stuff to me, personally. That's just my opinion. But the whole thing is this. Now, if you notice, you know, Daniel Bryan, he's slowly evolving into a heel. What I think would be interesting, and this is just Brooklyn Zone's opinion, I think that once, once, well, if and once Brian, you know, Daniel Bryan does become a heel, how awesome would it be if Michael Cole becomes his manager? Think about it. Michael Cole was the one that got Daniel Bryan props to begin with when he was in NXT. Cole played the anti, the anti, you know, Daniel Bryan support. He couldn't stand him. He hated him. He always spoke bad about him. Called him internet geek, saying he was out of his element saying that he's just an indie guy, he loves never make it in WWE, hating on Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan finally wins the title, he sticks it in Cole's face. But now when Daniel Bryan comes out, he's making up excuses, and, he's, and little by little you can see he wants to keep that title any way he can, whether it's DQ, pushing Mark Henry like he did on SmackDown last week, whatever the case is. So in my opinion, when, they, when Big Show gets his rematch on SmackDown this coming week, Something's going to happen where Daniel Bryan will keep the title because I don't see Big Show getting it right now. But look to see Daniel Bryan in the near distant future turning heel, which makes sense to what I was saying earlier about the possibility of Cena and Daniel Bryan hooking up. So we'll see what happens with that. My favorite part of Monday Night Raw last night had to be the Hall of Fame mentions. Let's start off by saying the first one they mentioned. It's not officially the first induction. The first person that was inducted for this year's coming up WWE Hall of Fame was actually Mil Mascaris, the man of a thousand masks related to Alberto Del Rio. That was uh, mentioned back in 2011. So if Mil Mascaris is still going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, Toddy D's opinion is this, that Alberto Del Rio will be the guy that inducts Mil Mascaris. But last night, they didn't mention Mil Mascaris. The supposedly first person that they mentioned that was getting inducted into the Hall of Fame was the one and only, and I'm happy to announce, the rated R superstar, Edge, Adam Copeland. Here's a kid that grew up in, in Canada with Christian. A lot of people back in the days when they first entered WWE thought they were really brothers. These two were best friends. They grew up with each other. They lived and breathed wrestling. Matter of fact, if you go back to WrestleMania 6 during the Hogan Warrior match, they're spotted in the crowd. So here's a kid who had a big golden dream, went down to the events just like I used to do when I was younger, dream of being a professional wrestler, he busted his ass. Edge started in, in the tag team scene. Him and Christian, they were hanging out with Gangrel. If you remember back in the days, he used to come up from the, from the stage with the fire. Then Edge and Christian became successful multiple tag team champions. They had great ladder matches, tables, ladders, and chairs with the Dudley Boys. With, uh, with the, with, with, what's the, oh boy, Toddy D's getting old here, ladies and gentlemen. You had, you had Edge and Christian, the Hardys, and the Dudley Boys. Forgive me, the Attitude Era was a long time ago been a lot of Steve Wise, Wise's since then, so, you know, I'm sorry, I apologize. But the bottom line is this. Edge, not only did he excel in the tag team division and hold those titles with Christian on multiple occasions and did those five-second photo ops for the photographers, the flash photography, which was genius, it was hysterical, I used to love when they used to come to town, Edge and Christian, and let's just say they went, say WWE was in Boston, Edge and Christian would come out wearing Yankee jerseys. It was too funny. But then after all the fun and all the gimmicks stopped, and Edge broke out to be a single star, you're talking about a former, I believe, 11-time world champion. He busted his ass. He earned the right. It's just a shame that Edge had to retire and end his career earlier than he would have. But think about it. The guy ended off on an awesome note. He defended the title at WrestleMania against Alberto Del Rio. He retired a champion. 
and now he's doing TV appearances on USA, he's doing movies, and now the Rated R Superstar will be coming home to the WWE and be inducted. And my gremlins are telling me that Christian will be the guy who inducts the Rated R Superstar. And then, if that wasn't good enough last night, ladies and gentlemen, we all had the pleasure and the privilege to hear that the WWE is inducting the Four Horsemen, baby. Ric Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Barry Windham, the Four Horsemen, along with James J. Dillon, their former manager. It should be interesting to see what goes on with this, since the whole thing is Ric Flair is still with TNA. But then again, as I mentioned on one of my other posts and on my videos, last year when the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels got inducted into the Hall of Fame, Ric Flair was in attendance and he was backstage for photo ops. So either Vinnie Max got some kind of little outside deal going with TNA, which who knows knowing Vinnie Mac, he likes to spread the bucks. But the bottom line is this, in my opinion, if Ric Flair could show up for HBK's induction, you know that the Nature Boy, woo, he's going to show up for the Four Horsemen's induction into the Hall of Fame. You can bank on that. I can't wait for it. Toddy D was supposed to go down to Miami. Unfortunately, things changed, so I'll be watching it in the comfort of my home this year. But all I know is this, when the Horsemen get inducted, and when the Nature Boy makes his appearance, whether TNA likes it or not, they're going to be getting honorable mentions about their name even being used. The only way TNA can actually become popular or get any notoriety is through WWE. How sad is that? And Vinnie Mac don't care because there's no competition. So, that's about it for now. I, for one, am kind of curious to see with this whole Cena Kane thing that will be going next week. Uh, the whole thing with Zack Ryder, the Long Island IZ, it puts a little comical twist into it. But eventually, I think Kane's just going to gun straight for John Cena. And the thing that I love the most, what Kane said to Cena a couple of weeks ago, he told him, instead of saying this whole hustle, loyalty, and respect thing, he told Cena to embrace the hate. That's pretty cool. I like to see what Cena does and where he goes with that. See, the bottom line is this. No matter how much the guy gets booed, meaning John Cena, no matter how much they hate him, people in my demographic, they can boo him all they want. But the bottom line is, as much as I like to see him turn heel, it'd be interesting. And for those of you out there that don't know what heel means, it means a bad guy. It's not going to happen. Only because John Cena sells the most merchandise. He's a juggernaut. He makes all the money for WWE. He's the, he's, I hate to use this comparison and, and do the name game, but he's the Hulk Hogan of today. And back in the days, it took Hogan many, many years to go from the immortal Hulk Hogan, the real American, the Hollywood Hulk Hogan. What I'm trying to say is Cena isn't going to be the Hollywood version of himself, the way Hogan portrayed himself when he got to WCW, not for a very, very long time. So I, in my opinion, don't expect to see Cena turn, you know, heel anytime soon. Well, that's all I got for now. I'm Brooklyn Zone Tidy D. As always, I hope this has been educational for you, and I hope you enjoyed my little short video. Stick around, stay tuned, because you never know what I'm going to be saying in the near distant future. But I'll tell you one thing, Raw's heating up, the Royal Rumble's coming soon, before you know it, it's going to be WrestleMania, Hall of Fame, you name it, forget about it. We're going to have a great time, and I'll be back to discuss things. And like I always say to everybody out there, thoughts, opinions, please send them to me. My YouTube is ToddyD6, leave a comment there, go to Toddy D Wrestling on Facebook, or look me up on my website at www.toddydwrestling.com. That's all I got for now. Once again, God bless, Happy New Year. Get to the matches, give me your thoughts, and I'll be back real soon. Take care. I'm out.